So my new regular sidekick, <laughs> Brian Wong, is back with us today, and he's going to talk about his expectations, hopes, dreams, and desires mm -hmm. for next Wednesday's earning call, and also for what he sees in terms of 2023 in total. Brian, great to have you back. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, great to, to join you, Randy. And uh, you know, your last name is Kirk, so we're going to a Star Trek future. So I'm your Spock. You know. oh, there you go. Yeah. So, so if you like having Brian on the show, please hit the like button. That'll know that I should invite him back. And if there's no likes, well, Brian, I guess yeah. could be the last one ever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then uh, Brian has a great blog. Uh, really seriously, if you haven't ever gone to his blog, uh, don't stop now, but just pick, make a note to yourself to go to his blog right after this particular episode. It's called thenextbigfuture.com, and it covers things from A to Z about uh, everything Tesla, but way beyond Tesla into all kinds of other science issues um, and futurism. Uh, Brian is uh, an 87 percenter. Is that what you are? An 87 percenter on that future Metaculous, yeah, ninety yeah, percent, yeah, yeah, ninety percent, yeah, ranked forty seventh out of you know, many thousands of people. So forty seventh yeah. in the world. Futures of, predictions, metaculous. Futures prediction. Well, yeah. there you go. All right, so Brian, uh, you specifically said that you would like to talk about your expectations for the year, mm -hmm. um, in context with what's going to happen next Wednesday. So right. I'm just going to give you the floor, and I'll interrupt when I think it's necessary. <laughs> yeah. So. Because we already have the volumes, you know, 422,000 delivered out of 440,000 vehicles, you know, there's a, a narrow range of uh, performance. The main critical thing for stock performance after that would, in terms of what Tesla can control, is the fact that um, what are the margins? Do we get over 20%? You know, is over 22? That's the key number, right? It's the, it's the auto gross margin. Right. So, and uh, probably um, without, um, um the the regulatory credits right yes. so be be 20 percent x reg credits and everything's fine go below and we're gonna have as um matt coaches whatever says you know a buying opportunity so <laughs> so, so yeah, and you're only really and you're only really talking about the stock market right so right. even if they drop below 20 percent, even if they came in at 18 percent or 19 percent mm -hmm. on automotive gross margins that would still be world beating right um and uh so we're really only talking about what the how the stock might be and uh, uh hit. okay right um but they did you know say you know they, they would keep it over 20 so hopefully right. you know they know what it is and they, they, they're correct on that um but going for the rest of the year so um my new analysis for the for the year is that we have uh, certain numbers which i would call um the real proven capacity right so for shanghai that's eighty-eight thousand per month because they've had three months of eighty-eight thousand production you know so it call, like it a two, call it a million call it a million a year right call it a million a year right but I, i'm focusing on eight thousand per month it's also the production per week okay right so eighty eight thousand twenty two thousand per week okay. right 13 weeks in a quarter. Mm -hmm. And then the, so then that would be if they were at pegged 88, 88, 88, mm -hmm. then Shanghai would produce 264,000 vehicles in a quarter, right? They produced, um, I think, um, 224,000 or something like that. And they domestically used like 125, 130,000 vehicles, right? So they exported about 100, almost 100,000, right? And they were short of capacity by about like 89% of what they could have could have done, right? And that was with a uh, Chinese New Year. There was a uh, Model 3 line. They did something there. So there was substantial shutdowns there. And they got to 90% of that capacity. So then the, but the capacity growth is in uh, Berlin and Austin, right? So... Throughout the quarter, first quarter, we were at like 3,000 um, per week. You know, they ended up at about like 35,000, 39,000, like that. So in theory, they could have had 39,000 each, right? And that would be paying. And, and they're at near that full capacity. And then three months at 150,000 or so, 145,000 proven capacity, right? Per quarter. Right. And they say on the, um, on the, um, 
uh, on the website. You no, know. in the quarterly report, in, uh, in, the, oh. in the investor report, Tesla says Fremont should have 550,000 Model 3, Model Y, uh, 100,000 um, S and X, right? But S and X only made 17,000 uh, mm -hmm. vehicles and then they delivered 10,000. Right. So S and X are clearly underperforming that capacity. I would say the real capacity there is about that 20,000 level and they have to price it to move those vehicles. So they may not choose to do that. They may just say, leave it at 17,000. Mm -hmm. And then how many to deliver? They had some shipping issues. So they'll I expect to be more delivered. But basically, I would say Fremont capacity, 150,000, right? So about 11, 12,000 per week. So all in, they can, I think, comfortably achieve 90% of these capacity levels. But um, the uh, Austin Berlin are at... Uh, 5,000 per week at the start of uh, end of Q2, start of Q3, 4,000 for the other one, and then adding about 1,000 per week going through the year. So them going to 5,500 per week and 6,500 per week for Q2 means that you're adding another 40,000 vehicles of, of potential production. Between the, between the two? Um, it would be... Um, uh, actually uh, combined 65,000. So combined each would be about 35,000. Yeah. Right. Because you go to 11,000 combined. That's, a, that's almost exactly the number I have. Right. Um, I just got to it a, a little different way, but it's almost mm -hmm. exactly, I'm figuring 65,000 additional model Ys, 60, 65,000 additional model Ys in the second quarter. And yeah. then again, in the third quarter, another 60, right. 60 65,000 in addition to right. the second quarter. Right. So, so but I'm saying that 90% um, level, right? Yeah. For uh, for China, for, for, for Europe, for North America, 90% of the max yeah. max levels, right? And, but then to achieve that, they will need to say, get at least 20,000, 30,000 more vehicles into China domestic market from the 130,000 domestic market, mm -hmm. or they have to open up a new market in Japan, other places, whatever like that. And they've already opened four new markets this year. Right. But then the new markets tend to only suck in about a thousand, two thousand vehicles. It's tough to I ramp see. up those markets initially, right? India might be able to do it. Sorry, Japan might be able to do it, but there could be political issues there. Yeah. So I'm saying that you have probably have to do it in China and you probably have to do it with more price cuts, right? So more price cuts in China uh, to move it from 125,000 up to 150,000 domestic. Europe has to be able to go from 40,000, 85,000 uh, domestic going into, into Europe. From some imports plus some other vehicles, they need to go from eighty-five thousand up to one hundred thirty thousand, one hundred forty thousand, right? Next quarter, and then the quarter after that, they have to go to one hundred seventy-five thousand, one hundred eighty thousand. Yeah. So again, yeah. probably price cuts. Right. right. But it's again, they have twenty percent margin; they can do it, right? Mm -hmm. And at the, the other, other reports about you know, eight thousand, nine thousand dollars per car uh, profit. They have the room to take out five thousand dollars or whatever and still make money. And when you go to the higher volumes, the cost of goods sold per vehicle goes down. So it's not like I cut by eight thousand. That's all my profit, but then I make another three thousand oh, dollars of better profit. Brian, I, Brian, I did a I did a long video the other day, which you you folks can go look at and see the details of all this. But they're selling Model Ys. These are Model Ys, which already had more margin than Model Threes. Mm -hmm. This is going to increase over i mean the overall potential margin right as they lower prices people are going to tend to buy a higher quality car mm -hmm. that is going to increase margins as they go into the better cars the performance cars or the long range cars um and the cost of almost every single raw material is coming down mm -hmm. dramatically in case of batteries uh, mm -hmm. CATL famously has said that they had to renegotiate with all the car manufacturers mm -hmm. to lower the cost of batteries because they're only running a 60% of capacity. Right. So with all of that going into it, I, I per particularly, I've been saying, I think it'll still be 22 to 23% margins, if not this quarter, certainly by the second quarter. Right. So I, I'm, I'm saying that uh, Europe and China for sure more price cuts coming because Europe needs to double its um, its sales, yes. right? So we need to go from 85,000 up to 108,000 two quarters, right? So the idea price cut, they move that many more vehicles, right? Right. So the 10, 15% price cut that we saw in China, they move from like 70,000 up to 120,000 
that level of price cut for for um, for Europe. And maybe an eight percent price cut in in China to get to what they need to do, mm-hmm. um, and then U.S. Maybe they need to price cut there too because uh, we're going to add, you know, you know, eighty thousand, hundred thousand vehicles from Austin to get the right. so right. the the stuff where Troy Test like is saying, and he's very good at what he does. He's saying all one point eight million. You're going to move two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand more vehicles by cutting the prices. It's going to happen, and well, they're going to do it. Well, the the opposite side to that Troy test like story, and I and I again, I, I think he's a great guy. I appreciate what he does for the community. I even asked him this in a in a in a direct message the other day. The only way that Tesla makes 1.8 million vehicles this year is if they absolutely cut production. Mm-hmm. They have to not put on additional shifts. They have to cut back existing shifts. I mean, if they are flat out. I don't think they can do less than 2.2. Right, right. So he he basically you look at his numbers quarter by quarter. He's saying that we drop yeah. twenty thousand vehicles, yeah. go from four hundred thousand production down to like four twenty something like that yeah. next quarter, right? Yeah. Which, you know, like I said, they maximum can produce a lot more. They can get to almost six hundred thousand vehicles, you know, five hundred fifty thousand production. So they will cut prices to do that. But then they say, oh, we're cutting margin. We're so close to twenty percent. In our previous video, I discussed how I think we are super close to really fantastic FSD, something that people will want to go from like instead of 10% of people buying it, 30%, 50% of people buying it. If 50% of people buy it, if they bought it instead of using subscription, that's $7,500 more average out per vehicle, $15,000 more for each vehicle that does it, $7,500 over the whole fleet if half do it. Right. So suddenly your margin all comes in next year, something like that when, when people buy it. Right. So I defer my margin this year <laughs> into next year, right? Yes. Or if it's twenty four hundred bucks, I'm getting five percent margin every year you own the vehicle, or and also Tesla can make money from the robo taxi network. And then, so, and, then, and, then on, and on top of that, if it was eighteen percent, it would still be better than any other maker out there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And it gets them to the, to the to the you know like higher volumes, which we yeah. were all looking at before. Yeah. I went from five hundred k cars to one hundred k. 500k cars to a million cars, and then I got three five percent more margin. They went from like 28 percent margin to like 32, so they got seven percent of margin there. So yeah. falling prices, more volume, yeah. Um, FSD robo taxi revenue. So yeah, the you only have to have a year or two patience on this thing for it to pay off. Oh, I'm hurting because they only got 20 percent margin this 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 time, and then Q4 they're back to 25. Uh, you know, like oh six months. How but, can I stand? But yeah. Brian, but Brian, I'm going to have to roll over my leaps because they're for July of next year. So yeah. I have to roll over my leaps to July of 25. I right. <laughs> yeah. So you have to do the leaps. That's right. All right, Brian. Well, I, I can see where you're going with this. I I'm in, I, I couldn't be more. That's maybe that's why you were part of the book. Is yeah. So we're so uh, in sync on some of the, some of this stuff. Uh, by the way, Brian was one of the co-authors of the uh, Elon Musk mission. And if you haven't bought your copy yet, why not? <laughs> and uh, Brian, again, find him at Next Big Future. That would be Next Big Future, his YouTube channel. That would be nextbigfuture.com, his blog, which you absolutely need to be looking at. And uh, Next Big Future also on Twitter, Twitter. and Patreon and Patreon. And Patreon as well. Yes. So yeah. it's easy. I wish yeah. mine was so easy. Mine are yeah. all different. All yeah. right, Brian. <laughs> great to have you on board. And uh, we'll be looking forward to the next time. This has been Randy Kirk. And it's been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now. 